Oh, oh if you could do mm. uh, just a single or a varying single a little bit, and if you could vary between a single and a tee shot, that'd be great. Right. And you, you and Dan Aykroyd yeah. have the same birthday? He was born in Canada today also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I was born on Canada's 100th yeah. birthday. Yeah. 67, that's 67. Right. Centennial, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pamela, I've got a question. When I lived in Canada, I drank a lot of Labatt's beer. Labatt's beer was my favorite beer. When you started doing ads for Labatt's and the photos and the commercials, mm -hmm. Was that awkward for you at first to, to pose, you know, with the beer and all that stuff? Oh, well, I'd never done anything like that before. Yeah, it was. I was just all, you know, I looked 12 in those posters, too. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> promoting beer, that's good. Yeah, was that awkward <laughs> getting recognized after those ads came out? Was that yeah. take a little getting used to? Yeah, it was. It kind of just slowly started there, and I started being, like, the Blue Zone girl, and everyone would say, hey, are you the Blue Zone girl? Are you, you this? I'd be like, yeah, I guess so. And then you start just realizing as it goes on, I mean, then when I moved here with Playboy and everything just kind of escalated well, slowly. Yeah. Well, turning to Barb Wire, uh, I know you must have been offered a lot of movies before that. What kind of stuff did you turn down? Not a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't offered a lot of movies. Um, but Barb Wire was just such a fun, I saw the comic book before I even saw the script and I said, I have to do this. I mean, this is so much fun. If I never do another movie in my life, this is so me, I've got to do it. You know, my manager was like, this isn't going to be good for your career. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's a, it's a job. It's, it's good for my career because I'm getting paid and I can put it in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, years ago I was on a movie set where they were using machine guns. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed how loud they are. I had no idea how loud automatic weapons are. Mm -hmm. Did it take you a while to get used to uh, the stuff that you were using on the movie? Um, well, we wore earplugs. And... Uh, I don't know. It was it, it was it was pretty amazing. I thought I just heard my husband out there. I know that was my husband <laughs> screaming. That was Tommy, wasn't it? <laughs> he's screaming up here. He's calling me. He's on the. He's underneath me and he's yelling up the vents. Great. Okay. He's a very mature, a very mature father. Yes. Anyway, no. It was really fun working with the guns and everything like that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, uh, last year, I was uh, here in L.A. and I went for a bike ride along the beach, mm -hmm. and I came across the Baywatch vans. Bought, bought a T-shirt out of the back of one of the, the, the lighting trucks there that I still wear. <laughs> but it was funny because uh, you were shooting a scene, and it was amazing seeing all these people, uh, the spectators lined up. But the weird thing were these, these photographers, guys with camcorders <laughs> and the walkie-talkies, and they're walking around you know, trying to get you know, tabloid shots. Yeah. How long did it take you to get used to that type of thing? Well, I'm still not really used yeah. to it. It's something that you just kind of, um, you know, kind of <laughs> tolerate for a while because there is a personal side of your life yeah. that you would like to keep private, and then there's you realize that these people are doing their job, and and part of their job is is good for you because it it elevates your, you know, uh, I guess I guess it all goes together, but it's just something you just have to kind of work into your lifestyle. It was, it was funny, uh, I was reading some articles about you talking about your, your impending motherhood, and it sounds like you're going to be a really together mom, very think protective. So? Yeah, I oh, think good. so, very much so. But you know, with, with, um, with Alec Baldwin, what, what he came up against with those photographers waiting outside mm -hmm. his house, are you bracing yourself for that type of Well, we intrusions? have photographers outside of our house all the time now, you know, hanging from trees and, and doing all sorts of crazy things, you know, before even having a baby. But um, we're, plan we're planning on... Lots of landmines and razor wire around our house. <laughs> We're just going to sit in our house and go, poof, you're gone. <laughs> no. Okay. And one last really quick question. I interviewed Kathy Ireland before, mm -hmm. and it was funny how, how men and women were anticipating my interview differently. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with you, the same thing. People say, oh, you're going to interview Pamela. You know, what's she going to be like? And they were curious. Do you find that men or women sometimes prejudge you before they meet you? Yeah, well, I, I can understand why. I mean, if they've heard any of the tabloid rumors or anything like that, it's just kind of, it paints a whole idea of another person, a whole different person than who I am. So then you can't help but having this preconceived idea of who you're going to meet. So hopefully I can only surprise people and pleasantly surprise people because I don't think I have a lot to live up to at this point. <laughs>